Hey folks, welcome back. Fourth time's a charm. I have been trying all morning to get this darn stream working. Between problems with the streaming software and problems with the aircraft, uh, I know we're looking at the back seat right now. We are in the brand new Cessna Caravan. I'm sorry, Cessna Skymaster 2, created by Carinato, and uh, just came out not too long ago. I don't know exactly when, but I opened up the flight simulator this morning. I saw it available, so I snatched it up. And uh, the reason why you're looking at the back seat is because I'm taking the time to look directly into my stream cam so you can see my ugly mug straight on. When I'm flying, of course, I will be turned toward the front and you will get more of a profile view of me during our time together. I hope that's okay. We are here at an airport I'm extremely familiar with. This is where I grew up, it's called Crest Air Park. Wow, you can see the reflection. You can see the. This is kind of a sun visor up here. A little bit of a reflection of the. Uh, of the uh, cabin. And you can see it's translucent. You can see that little uh, uh, placard that's up there on the top. Anyway, uh, half, more than half of my training was done here. Today, this field is known as Geyer Field in honor of the previous owner who had passed away. I'm going to try something now. Again, I've had three crash to desktops already with this brand new aircraft. And part of the problem, I believe, was starting the sim from the outside. But I really want to dig, take a look at the outside. So I'm going to risk it and go outside for just a bit. There we are. So the front prop is started, the front engine is started, but the rear engine is not started. It's kind of a push-pull configuration. Um, when you get rated for this aircraft, you don't, it's not a, well, it is a multi-engine, but it falls under a special category. If you get rated multi-engine in this plane, you can only fly this plane. I don't believe you can fly other multi-engines because uh, this is uh, supposed to be a lot simpler to fly because there's no uh, what's known as a favorite engine. You know, in case of engine loss, you have a favorite engine and a not favorite engine, depending on the direction of rotation. Okay, let's see if we can start up that second engine, huh? Gonna. You know, well, I love the love the detail, love the graphics, but we'll get rid of that. And let's find out what we need to do to start that rear engine. Oh, I felt a little vibration. Could that have all could that have been all it takes? Nope. Okay, well we'll turn on the the engine pumps. Rear start. Okay, could that have been all it takes? Oh, it turned. Maybe I need to hold that start. Let it build a little bit. Okay. That doesn't seem to be doing it. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was turning. Oh, well, there might be one of the problems. I don't have the mixture set up for it. My controls actually are... I need to... 
I was not expecting to fly this airplane, so I don't think my controls are set up for a twin-engine airplane. Let's go to control options. Thank you for indulging me in this. <laughs> uh, we'll go to Bravo Throttle, and instead of basic single, we'll do... Complex Twin. And let's just take a look at our throttles. Okay, there's throttle one. There's throttle two. Let's look at our mixtures. There's... Oh, okay, mixture one is set up there. And mixture two is set up over here. Okay. Yeah, that could have been all it was, was getting getting some mix up. I've killed both engines now. Okay, mixtures are in. Props are in. And, uh... Let's pull the throttles. Actually need to go into the controls and reverse. Reverse those. Oops. Mixtures. And throttles. So let's rich things up. We'll pull the throttles for now. And now that we have a better understanding of what those do, we'll put on the fuel pumps. Just momentarily. Maybe we can start without the fuel pumps on. We'll start number one. And there it goes, and we'll start number two. And I felt a vibration, and there it goes. And you can see we're getting engine data from both engines. Nav light on, strobe light on, beacon light on, taxi light off, landing light on. Okay, time to look around this aircraft. I can see it's modeled to the usual Carinato standard, which by that I mean absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Let's go on to our uh, GPS here and see if our flight plan came over. don't really see it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Don't know why it's not on the screen. Oh, it is on the screen. It's, well, I'm not sure if it is or not. Well, let's just fly it and find out. Our first uh, nav aid is the PAE VOR, which is at 110.6. So let's get up here and Okay, what do I need to do to move that cursor down? 
Oh, I know. Uh, okay. There we go. 110 6 And then we'll flip flop that Okay, 110 6 is in the number 1 VOR And let's go ahead and hook up the air traffic control program. I have a virtual co-pilot to help me with the radios. That program is taking a little longer to get set up. We are connected. Let's see what happens. First time using the air traffic control program, of course, with this aircraft. Seattle Center, Skymaster 747 Sierra Bravo, ready to copy. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, we don't have a flight plan on file for you. No, oh, maybe because I haven't filed it. <laughs> okay, let's uh, validate that flight plan. File that flight plan. She's chewing on it. She's chewing on it. Okay, she's got it. Let's try that again. Seattle Center, Skymaster 747 Sierra Bravo, ready to copy. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo is cleared to Kilo Papa Alpha Echo is filed. Expect departure runway 33. Maintain 4,000 feet. Squawk 4136. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo is cleared to Kilo Papa Alpha Echo as filed. Maintain 4,000 feet. Squawk 4136. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo read back correct. Contact us for IFR release when number one for departure. We'll contact you for IFR release. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Okay, is she going to do my transponder or do I have to do it? 4136 is what she said. Altitude reporting mode. I think that is set up. Okay. Seattle Center. Skymaster November 747 Sierra Bravo, ready for departure. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, this is Seattle Center on 134.95, go ahead. Seattle Center, Skymaster November 747 Sierra Bravo, ready for IFR release. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, say again, request with departure runway. Seattle Center, Skymaster 747 Sierra Bravo, ready for IFR release, runway tree tree. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, say again, request with departure runway. Seattle Center, Skymaster November 747 Sierra Bravo, ready for IFR release, runway 33. 7 Sierra Bravo, you are released for departure. 
runway 33 after takeoff turn to heading 344 then proceed direct Kilo Romeo November Tango climb and maintain 4000 feet. Release for departure void at 1601 Zulu advise with alternate intentions no later than 1606 Zulu time now is 1554 Zulu. 7 Sierra Bravo released for departure runway 33 after takeoff turn to heading 344 then direct Kilo Romeo November Tango climb and maintain 4000 feet. Release for departure void at 1601 Zulu Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Okay, release for departure. Parking brake off. Let's see if I can find the parking brake on this beast. There it goes. The parking brake is this little switch here. Down by my left foot. That's off. That's on. And that's off. Okay. Let's just go throttle up on the no on the number one engine uh, at first. Let's see if number one is enough to get us off the ground. No power on number two. Well, let's slowly put in some power on number two. There's number two. Holding runway center line with my rudder pedals. A lot of memories of this airport come flooding back. This is on the border between the cities of Kent, Washington and Covington, Washington. We are in live weather. Cleared to 4,000 feet. Turn just a little bit to maintain 344 on the heading. Looks like this overcast is going to be pretty low. Climbing at 120 knots. So this is the autopilot. We can push heading. And once we get to 4,000 feet, we'll push altitude. Unfortunately, with the way I see our route came alive on our uh, 530. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, contact Seattle approach on 128.5. Enjoy. Approach on 128.5, Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Approach course. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, climbing to 4,000 feet. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, good morning. Radar contact. Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo, you are of course. Turn left gate 296 to return to course. Heading 296, Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo. 296 on the heading. Boy, that heading is awful sensitive. Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo, turn left gate 296. Heading 296, Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo. There's 3,000. Towering Nimbus clouds. Didn't look that stormy. I don't think there's any prediction of stormy weather. Just typical Seattle overcast. 
those clouds look like towering cumulonimbus indicative of thunderstorms I don't think that was the weather you can see our course line came alive in our Garmin 530 Pilot to ATC is working flawlessly. Let's see if I can tune in the uh, the pain VOR on our HSI. There it is. We're right on course to the pain VOR. We're using, okay, coming upon 4,000. We'll level out and push altitude. We're at 4,000, tracking toward the pain VOR and also our first waypoint, which is at Renton Airport. Let's take a look at a chance. I'm gonna chance not crashing to desktop and take a look outside. Typical Carinado fashion, the usual Microsoft avatars are not being used. Um, the Microsoft avatars tend to be multi-gender and multi-race, but it seems like the Carinado avatars are always old white guys. <laughs> they all look like me! <laughs> Okay, so we've flown past our first uh, waypoint, and now I'm going to push uh, on a deselect heading, and hmm, well, I'm going to select heading again go off of never used a, a weather radar on a general aviation airplane before. I don't like when Navigraph does that. Can't they just let me get into my own charts without making me play this little game every time?
1093 is the frequency we want for our ILS. Star 7 Sierra Bravo expect their never approach to runway 3 for left with the by transition at Snohomish County. Expect the nav approach to runway 3 for left with the pay transition Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Okay, I don't want runway 3 for left. What do I... I know there's a way of requesting a different runway. Let's see what happens. Pain approach, Skymaster 747 Sierra Bravo, request runway 16 right. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, this is Seattle approach on 128.5, go ahead. Pain approach, Skymaster November 747 Sierra Bravo, request runway 16 right. Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo, this is Seattle approach on 128.5, go ahead. Approach Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, request arrival runway 16 right. Master 7 Sierra Bravo expect their nav approach to runway 3 for left with the by transition at Snohomish County. Expect the nav approach to runway 3 for left with the pay transition Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. She just does not want to give me that 1 6 right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't like doing this. I'm going to bust the it's her instructions, and I'm going to continue on to uh, to one six right as I planned. <laughs> I am a bad person. Main approach, Skymaster, November seven four seven Sierra Bravo, request arrival runway one six right. Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo pattern direction is right. Pattern direction is right. Okay.
We are five miles from our turning point for the 1-6 right approach, 5.4 miles. Sky Master 7 Zero Bravo, climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet, Sky Master 7 Sierra Bravo. I think I'm doing a pretty good job at 4,000 feet. If you don't like me being a couple feet off of altitude, you're really not going to like me when I land on a runway of my own choosing. <laughs> Master 7 Sierra Bravo descend and maintain 3,600 feet altimeter to 9092 at Snohomish County. Descend and maintain 3,600 feet Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Descend and maintain 2,700 feet clear for Nav approach runway 3 for left contact tower on 120.2. Enjoy your morning. Clear for an AV approach runway 34 left tower on 120.2 Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Tower Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo inbound for an AV approach runway 34 left. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, good morning. Radar contact. Continue run of the runway 34 left call and established on final. Continue and after runway 34 left will call when established on final Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo. Skymaster 7 Sierra Bravo, this is Pain Tower on 120.2. Please repeat your request. You can see the Payne VOR passing by on our left-hand side. We're coming upon 3,600 feet. I'm going to re-engage the, the altitude hold on the autopilot. Looks like our autopilot is a rudimentary style that does not have an approach mode. So even though it's very good 
for holding altitude and for holding heading and even perhaps holding a VOR it is not good for flying a automated approach so time to be a pilot One of those people who likes to hear the nav aids so I'm going to turn the nav one speaker on and the marker speaker on I can hear the I think I can hear the faint beeping of the navs identifier I can see by this display that we are receiving the pain ILS on our nav 1 1093 Let's get ourselves cranked around to a heading of 160. Shooter 1-5, full stop, stop, free stop. Shooter 1-5, follow that B-22, check with time from 
can see by the yellow uh, carrot that we are below glide, glide slope. Wonder what happens if I hit this VOR lock. We're starting to intercept glide slope. I think we may have to manage our own altitude here. We are in flaps range, so let's give ourselves one notch of flaps. if that did anything or not. Let's take a look. Yeah. We did get one notch of flaps. Okay. Not descending quite fast enough. Let's add another notch of flaps. There's the outer marker. Airspeed is good. We're still above glide slope. We do not have the runway environment in sight. Airspeed and attitude when you're in the clouds. Number one is airspeed. Number two is attitude, but they're very close, one and two. And then a far distant third is heading. And heading is okay. Airspeed, attitude, heading. And then you can throw into your scan vertical speed and altitude. But always go back to heading or attitude and airspeed. Attitude, airspeed, attitude, airspeed throw in a heading, a vertical speed, and an altitude from time to time, but keep your eyes moving. Attitude, airspeed, attitude, airspeed. We're still well above glide slope. That, I believe, was an autopilot disconnect. There's glide slope. We're still looking for the runway environment. We're below glide slope. We're a little fast. We're on glide slope. We're on localizer and glide slope. We can still hear the nav course code to let us know that we're getting a good signal. 
That's why it's so important to keep that nav radio on. On the speaker. Still on glide slope. Now our airspeed is better. Attitude, airspeed. Attitude, airspeed. Still descending, 500 feet per minute. Do still do not have the runway environment. little fast now we're well below glide slope Catching glide slope from the bottom. Airspeed's okay. Tracking the localizer okay. Little bit below glide slope. Control pitch. Bring the pitch to level until you've caught that glide slope again. bit below glide slope. Two miles to the runway. On glide slope, on localizer. I can see some trees out the left hand side, but that does not count as the runway environment. I see some trees there right below our canopy. That does not count as the runway environment. What you need to see are real lights, runway and identifier lights. You can just make out the trees. There we go. There's the runway identifier. Whoa, this is some IFR weather. And we are on the ground. Wow. We are down to... I don't even know if we had minimums. <laughs> We're not doing a very good job controlling our taxi. That's for darn sure. Anyway, we have made it to Payne Field, home of the Jumbos. And I tell you what, in this weather, I don't know if I even want to try to taxi around. I certainly lost any help from air traffic control. I'm going to call that a success and end the stream. And Mr. 7 Sierra Bravo lines are calm, clear to land runway 34 left. <laughs> clear to land. Clear to land runway 34 left, Skymaster 7 Sierra thank, Bravo. Thank you for the landing Sky clearance. Master 7 We're already Sierra down. Bravo, exit runway when <laughs> I'm going to end the stream and wish you folks a good day.